Hello, my name is Maximilian MacDonald, and I've been an avid auto enthusiast since day one. I'm very fortunate. I've had cars since I've been 12 years old. And my passion with cars is not just the aesthetics and the mechanics, it's actually driving. Uh, I think a lot of people enjoy the freedom of driving. For some people, it's just merely a place to get to A and B, and the car doesn't matter, and how they get from A to B doesn't matter. It could be through a bicycle or anything. But for me, it's about cars, it's about performance, it's about the exhilarating speed that one gets with an automobile. And with that is a formidable task of being safe, if not for yourself, for the well-being of others are important. Even if you're indifferent to the well-being of others, the fact of the matter is, is if you're a dangerous driver or you endanger other people, your insurance will go up or you will wreck a car. Both of those are expensive and both those are sort of a bit of a buzzkill. A couple things that I'd like to impart to you about motorsports and ultimately driving on the road is safety. Safety is a big part of it because if you're not safe, you're not gonna be able to return another day. And part of that safety is car control, it's also control of yourself. It's also being aware of your surroundings. It's also being aware of the laws, the, ru the, the rules of the road, and uh, everyone else on it. So I'd like to give you some bits of information that might be useful for you. Most people aren't savvy to what the rules of the road are and the laws are. There are limitations to everything, and it's important to know what those are because anytime you engage in anything, you wouldn't play basketball without knowing what the rules are. You wouldn't uh, play a video game without knowing what the rules are. Well, you shouldn't know anything about driving without knowing the rules. And part of that is the driving. Part of it is what is legal to modify in your car, uh, what you can do and what you can't do to your car. Don't expect the officer to know everything. They're busy enough just making sure you're safe, let alone knowing what the rules of the automobile may be. And if you have a vehicle that is impaired, meaning the tires are bald, you can be held responsible for it. Tail light doesn't work, you're gonna be held responsible. Some of these things can be just moving infractions and some are static that won't affect your insurance rates. But if you get into a collision because your tires were bald or other aspects of the car weren't, weren't working as they should, now it's really gonna cause some trouble for you and you can get tickets, again, affect your insurance. So now it, that uh, super awesome car that you wanted, the insurance is gonna be more than the car payment you may have on it. Therefore, you get to drive around in some pathetic Geo Metro. If you like Geo Metros, that's all right, but most people don't. So those are things to consider, using your resources. Secondly, even if you have a nice car, but you end up in a ditch, you've now wasted all your energy collecting that nice car, and uh, no one likes to destroy things only to not have them any longer. Car control, we all think it's just steering the car and hitting the accelerator and the brake. Well, it's a lot more than that. Fundamentally, you have to be planted. Um, and with that comes several aspects. One of them is where your hands are. We all know that we want to have them fundamentally at 10 and two. And that allows us to maneuver the car and not have our hands going in different places. But another thing that's important is where our arms are sitting. A properly placed is when you have your hands all the way out and the edge of the steering wheel is at your wrists. That gives you the correct dynamics for controlling the car and steering it. If you're sitting back like it's a low rider, you're, you're not gonna be able to control the car that well. The steering wheel's not to hold you in, it's for you to steer the car. And a lot of people, unfortunately, hold themselves in with a steering wheel. They're going around a corner in a race car as such, and they're trying to hold in. You lose so much energy trying to hold the, the yourself to the steering wheel than steering the car. So it's important that you always do that. The second part of that is the airbag. If you have a vehicle with an airbag, is designed for a distance between the steering wheel. It's not meant for you to be right up on it or to be you know, a foot and a half away. It's not gonna be an effective form of uh, suppressing the forward kinetic energy of your body moving forward. So remember that, that's very important. A couple other things to be very uh, keenly aware of with that is that where your hands are are a big factor to the safety of it. If you have your hand in the center here, airbag goes off, you're gonna do that. If it's here, it's gonna go here.
going to be a big factor of how you come out of a situation. The other thing is wearing your seatbelt. You may think in a collision, if you have an airbag, that that's all you need. In reality, airbags are just meant for idiots that don't wear seatbelts. Race cars do not have airbags because they know you're going to be wearing a harness belt. Airbags are just meant for people that don't wear a seatbelt correctly and are looking to drive around without any form of uh, safety equipment. One of the things that occurs if you do not wear a seatbelt correctly is that you will submarine and slide under the seat. That's a big factor. Most injuries now are not that the people are dead, but they end up being paralyzed because they end up submarining under the steering wheel and then they have lower torso damage. So, fair enough, you're not dead, you're just paralyzed. Your choice, but really the better choice is to wear a seatbelt properly. So this isn't your standard seat belt that you have in a passenger car, it's a harness belt. And all a harness is doing is taking and restraining your body from flying forward. But it's only as good as it's worn. So if you wear a seat belt, put it under your armpit, you end up wearing it loosely, it's not gonna do its job. Also, the key thing is to hold you in your seat. Because if you're not held in your seat, you're now spending the time holding on to the steering wheel. Your steering wheel is not to hold on, it's actually to steer the car. So it's important you wear your belt correctly. The second part of that is that if you don't wear the seat belt correctly, you can slide out underneath it and many other aspects of things can happen. Make sure your seat belt's properly worn and it's in good condition. What good is a fire extinguisher if it's empty? What good is a seat belt that's not working correctly? Fundamentally, the correct way to wear a seat belt is to make sure that it's across your hips and it's going across across that way. You don't want it too high or too low. And uh, functionally, you want to make sure that it's not loose and it's not being held back or in any form. Um, and, you know, ultimately it should be across the center on a three-point harness. Uh, and uh, you want to make sure that if you're wearing something, be aware of that too. If you have pens in your pocket, a flashlight in your pocket, things like that can be impaled against you because now all your mass is going forward. And you may only weigh 150 pounds, 210 pounds, but the kinetic energy is now the equivalent of tons. So what might be okay to be pushed against your chest will kill you otherwise. Another important thing is beyond having your hands in the correct length for the steering wheel, is making sure that your feet aren't on the tippy toes or you're not able to articulate the pedals the correct way. Especially if it's a manual car, you don't want to have your leg hyperextended. And if you, have, if you sit too far back, then you're not able to put all your energy to the brake. The ball of your foot is where that pedal needs to be. And if you're actuating the brake or anything with the tip of your toes, you don't have as much power to do the stopping or even control things. You also will end up fatiguing because it's not how your body's designed to work. It's not legal to drive in flip-flops. Shoe wear is important. You can be given a ticket. Secondly, if you have loose shoes or if you have boots that are too big, you can't be engaged in proper control of the vehicle because you may unintendedly hit the brake or the accelerator at the same time you're trying to do the opposite. The mirrors are also important. They allow you to see things you can't see, and you can't drive through something you can't see. What's coming up behind you is just as important as what's in front of you. If you want to have the mirrors properly adjusted, you really want to be able to see just the tip of each corner of your vehicle. Ultimately, if you can see anything more than the door handles on your vehicle, you're probably using wasted space. You really want to see the roadway you don't want to see the side of your car. Make sure that you also are aware that if they are frosty and you don't have mirrors that defrost, you may want to wipe those off beforehand. Making sure they're clean as well is important. Same thing with your mirror. You don't need to see your pretty mug in the mirror. You want to see what's around you. Remember that there are blind spots and that's important to make sure that you know where those blind spots are. You can't just rely on the mirror. You may actually have to do a head check and see what's coming up on you. Just because your car has a monitoring system that may alert you to traffic that's next to you, it's not as good as actually putting your eyes on it. Even the most uh, sophisticated self-driving car doesn't see everything. 
Be aware of if you can see the gauges or not. Some cars are obscured and you don't get to see, well, what the temperature of the vehicle is, how much fuel you have, and so forth. Talking about fuel, it's always better to have a full tank than an empty tank. Also, if you're driving an older vehicle, you may try to find out how far empty you can drive. Well, I can tell you, different cars of the same year may tell you different things, and you may be able to drive 30 miles on empty. Some cars you may not even get to empty and you're out of gas. Especially important is with electric and hybrid vehicles. More importantly, electric vehicles may tell you suggested how far you can go. In reality, you may have vi vampire loss, whether it's the heater on or the, the air conditioning on. And when it says you have 60 miles of range, you may only have 40 miles. Your experience may tell you that, but that even changed significantly with the weather environment. So be aware that uh, it's a, just a suggested uh, what mileage you have remaining with a vehicle. Same with uh, the vehicle in a combustion powered vehicle, how many miles you have before you run out of fuel. They're suggestions. And generally they're very optimistic. It's better to be a pessimist than being on the side of the road with an optimistic uh, suggestion. It's important sometimes to be aware of the car beyond the controls, beyond being able to drive the vehicle. Does it have a flat tire? Maybe you know how to change that. Maybe you don't. Maybe you, the vehicle doesn't even have a spare tire. What do you do in a situation like that? Do you know how to turn on the hazards? Do you know if it's safe to drive on a flat tire for a bit of duration till it's in a situation where you can change it? All those are gonna vary from condition to condition to vehicle to vehicle. Many cars today don't have spare tires, but they have tire pressure monitoring systems. How accurate are those? How much time do you have remaining? It may tell you that you have a low tire. Is it flat or is it just low? These are important things to be aware of. Do you have a first aid kit with your vehicle? What happens if you're in the snow? You may want to make sure that you have a safety blanket. You may even, if you're going in more rural situations, in the backwoods, you may want to have extra food, you may have extra uh, water, things like that are to, important to be aware of. Fire extinguisher is rarely installed in a vehicle, but it's very important for your safety and the vehicle's safety. I remember as a kid seeing an ad, save your, your $40,000 car with a $40, $40 fire extinguisher, and that's more true today than it ever was. So now you're saving a $100,000 car with a, with a $100 fire extinguisher. Do you know how to operate that? That's important as well. Do you know what to do in case there's a fire? Do you know how to disconnect the battery? Do you know how to jump a car? All these things are very important and very reasonable to think that you're gonna engage in a situation where you need to know that information. Most people don't even know where the owner's handbook is. You may wanna read that before you drive the car. I would think that most people should, but very few people do. It's important to do that. Some cars don't have owner's handbooks. It's gonna be whether it's a, a Tesla and you are gonna to have to look at the information display, whether it's another car that you have to go online to access that information. When you're in the middle of the woods and you don't have an owner's handbook and you don't have internet, good luck with that. So being aware of the car's limitations and the demands that it places when you use it is important. A couple other things to be aware of. Are you familiar with the controls of the vehicle? The climate control, the lights, all those things are super important. But if you just hop into a car, you don't know where the defroster is. You don't know where the turn signal uh, may be located. A lot of cars, a brand new Tesla doesn't have the stocks. It's on the steering wheel. If you don't know where those are, you're gonna be distracted trying to find those things. You're gonna also be distracted if you don't know where the seat controls are and things like that. So you wanna make sure your seat's adjusted before you engage in driving the vehicle. You shouldn't be adjusting the mirrors, you shouldn't be adjusting the seat as you're driving. Distracted driving is a real thing in today's world, whether it's texting someone, changing music, or everything else. It's interesting, when they first introduced radios to cars, they were actually illegal. They thought it would be a distraction if you were listening to the radio. And times have changed, but so has uh, the needs of the driver. So a lot of times just accessing climate control, heaters and things like that can distract you plenty. 
You also realize that your phone records can be collected by law enforcement. So just because you weren't on the phone doesn't mean that that data can't be found and they can assess whether or not you were. Vehicles now have black boxes. They can tell if you had just changed the temperature on the car, if you were listening to the music, if you were distracted in any form. So remember that uh, just because you feel that you weren't driving fast, that data will be found and it's not subjective anymore. Data doesn't lie, people do. It just takes a moment to be the recipient of someone's bad decision. And hopefully that's not you, but you may be the recipient of someone being distracted and you're the recipient of their bad decision. You can be in your lane paying attention, but some idiot could be on the phone, texting or otherwise, and they're now running in front of you. And that's not your fault, but it's now your responsibility. So it's a two way street. And that's something to be always important. You may be the best driver in the world, but there's idiots on the road. Hopefully you're not one of those idiots. A couple of other things to remember that you're irresponsible for the passengers in your car. If they engage other drivers, you may not be an idiot, but your friend may be. And if they are engaging in road rage, you're gonna be the recipient of that ticket and that situation. So even though you're right, your passenger may be wrong. Road rage is a real thing. People that are controlled by their emotions are generally poor thinkers. And they will fortify that by doing dangerous acts and they may hurt your car and they may not have insurance. So just because you're right, you may be wrong. So it's best not to engage someone that has those per poor personality traits as rage and everything else. At the end of the day, they're the idiot. Just laugh it aside and don't engage those people because that may be, you don't like them already and they're acting the fool. You may be now connected to them and in a, a situation of uh, law or trying to get money from them from wrecking your car and everything else. It's unfortunate. I've had people hit my car, no insurance. Now I get to pay for their stupid move. It's not worth it. Just let the idiot go on and continue on and engage someone else. It doesn't need to be your lifelong connection with that person for their bad actions. It's important to conduct yourself and not engage with that person because a lifetime is not worth that situation. Ultimately, uh, when you're driving the vehicle, you can't hop in from one vehicle to another. I'm fortunate that I drive in the course of a week, maybe 40, 50 cars. And I have to be acutely aware of the nuances of each vehicle. And they do change with the weather. Uh, I have some vintage cars that I can drive flat out if the weather is good. As soon as it gets rainy, they don't have traction control. Uh, they have small tires. A variety of things change dynamically. And the way I drive in the, in the wet is entirely different than it, how I drive in the dry. Be aware of that. Several things on the road can be very dangerous. Part of it is the changing environment. When you're driving your car, things change. Your car changes, whether it's warm outside or it's cold outside. Your tires are cold, your tires are warm. Is it fully loaded? Is it not fully loaded? Those change the dynamics of the car significantly. Whether you have passengers in it is gonna make a difference. You may go around that corner at a certain speed. It may be fine. Tomorrow, there may be gravel on it. Tomorrow, there may be ice on that. You don't know that until you hit that corner. So just because you've done that corner a million times, something could change. The cars you're driving are gonna have different thresholds of performance. Everyone knows if it's a big lifted truck, it's gonna handle different than a sports car. With a lot of cars today, their capacity to Overdrive their abilities and your abilities is very easy. So you always have to be aware of these changing environments and drive accordingly. Um, that's something that I think a lot of people lose the mindset of. Part of it is, is that even the best race car driver takes warm up laps and prepares himself for the nuances of that vehicle that's specifically how it's handling in that environment at that temperature. So. You can never just say, oh, I know how this car handles. You don't. Each one's different. How, what you look at is a big thing. This is a metaphor for life. Whatever you spend your attention on is where you're going to be. And they always say with a race car, you need to look where you want to go, even if it's entirely different than where the car is going. You will somehow magically find out that the car is going to go where you're looking. Subconsciously, you're going to drive that car that way. 
Driving is a lifelong ambition. It is a privilege. And it's something that you actively always have to be better at. Uh, things are changing. Rules are changing. The road is changing. The cars are changing. People are changing. You can never be a terrific driver. You can always be a better driver. And that's something that's always apparent with how you feel you are now. And you probably look back six months ago, a year ago, and when you're older, you'll look back many years ago and you're like, man, I sort of suck driving. It's something that you never reach the pinnacle. Whether you're the best race car driver, you always take the time to survey the road, pay attention, and do the best you can because you're never good enough. And that's okay, but you aspire to be the best.